Hi, everyone. Welcome to Module 4, Customer Experience. I'm happy and honored to be here representing Latin startups. Thank you very much for watching and for your time. Um, so let me introduce myself. My name is Carolina Camargo. I go by Caro as well. I am Customer Experience Specialist at Latin Startups. I have over 10 years experience in customer service um, and seven years working for a, a big hotel, five-star hotels uh, back in Brazil, where I'm from. Um, and working there was a great experience because when you work for a big hotel, like a, a five-star hotel, they have to um, give all the employees several trainings. So almost weekly trainings on customer service. Um, so doing that, they can guarantee um, that all the employees are on the same page, on the same level to deliver an exceptional service. So I learned a lot from this experience. And what I like the most about, about this field is that we learn every day because we have new situations coming up, coming up every day, new customers, and um, different personalities. Um, so that's what I like the most. And I, I'm learning every day a new thing. I'm living in Canada since 2017 when I moved, um, when I, as I mentioned, from Brazil, Sao Paulo, where I'm from. Um, love living in Canada. I love this country very much. I would keep the winter if I could, yes. Uh, but lo I love this country. Um, and as many newcomers, when I moved, I had to uh, go through the whole process. So I had to study. So I graduated uh, from two different institutions, um, one in customer service um, and the other one in event planning. So let's start. So here we have the main goals for this session today, which is basically to help a company understand how to communicate better with their customers. So what can, what can they do better to uh, improve uh, the service they are delivering, right? Uh, and in order to do that, they need to identify the key aspects to change in customer satisfaction, right? So it's a matter of understanding. Um, also, it's very important to be be able to change because um, if what, if you would identify and you, you are not open to change, it's not going to work. So it's a matter of uh, understanding um, changing, being able to change and like putting to action, okay? Identifying and putting into action. This is very important. And we're gonna go through all the, the process and all the, the like more in detail for this um, process. So the goals for the session today is basically uh, to help a company uh, understand how to communicate better with their customers. So um, how you can improve your communication level in order to deliver a great service, right? How can you and your team work together to elevate the communication um, and do better? Uh, and also to identify the key aspects to change in customer satisfaction. So it's a matter of understanding, um, identifying what must, must be changed, and put into action, okay? This is very important because sometimes um, you are not open to change and you, you must be. This is very, very important. It sometimes involves uh, changing your process, you know? So you must be able, open mind, to uh, do a few changes in order to improve the quality of the communication that will impact directly on the, on the customer service level, okay? Okay, so for the contents of the module, uh, the part one, it's what is customer experience? So we're gonna go more in detail and what is it um, and what should we do to... For the contents of the module, um, we're gonna cover for the part one, what is customer experience? So we're gonna go more in detail and what is um, all about. The part two is the importance of customer service. So understanding why is it important? Why is that so important, right? On the part three, we're gonna cover um, how, how we can measure the customer experience, how we, we know the customer is happy or unhappy with the service we provided, 
that's a very uh, good piece um, to uh, learn and to understand. So the part four is how to deliver an exceptional customer experience. Um, so let's check it out. Okay, so before we start, I want to ask you a question. Do you know the difference between internal customers versus external customers? Um, have you ever uh, heard about it, about these uh, terms? Um, I'll give you some time so you can think about it. You can even uh, take notes and we will explore more about it on the next slide. So to explore um, more in detail this concept, I brought this chart that is very uh, straightforward. So internal customers would be um, everyone we have a work relation um, in, the, in the organization we work. So our colleagues, employees, owners, the representatives, our boss, our leader, um, everyone we have this work relation, we consider the, we consider them internal customers. On the other hand, external customers um, are all the like the customers, suppliers, all the like the society, governments. Um, so why I like this concept and I, why I want you to um, start this presentation with this concept, it's because it, it is important to understand that when you have a great internal customer service, you build a good environment in your company. And we will impact and reflect in, on how your team deliver good service to the external customers. Remember, happy employees equal happy customers. And I like to take this also to my personal life, like with my families and friends. I love to treat them like I, I, I like to um, treat them as my internal customers, you know, like make them happy, exceed their expectations, make a surprise. Um, always like make them happy whenever I can. So this is this is very very important. And um, as an example um, of an internal customer um, relation, um, when you for example call the HR and ask for a pay stub, when the HR send this pay stub back to you, uh, this is a service. When your colleague call you um, asking for a favor or asking for an extra um, work, um, you are providing a service, right? So this is very, very important uh, to treat your employees and look at them at, uh, as your customers. This is very important. And that's why I like this, this concept to, um, I like this concept very much. And I wanted to start this presentation with this concept um, so we can uh, proceed. So the part one of this, um, so the part one of this uh, session covers what is customer service. So basically, it's all about creating a relation of trust and loyalty with your customer, right? It's like all the support given to them, like and remember to the internal and or external customers. It's a complete journey. That's the difference between customer experience and customer service. The customer, and we're gonna cover, and we're gonna go more in detail about that. The customer experience is a complete journey, okay? Customer service is uh, about exceeding customer uh, expectations, is going beyond, okay? Um, and I like this, I like this um, statement very much. I don't know, but let me find out. This is very honest. You know, you're being honest, which is extremely important for a, um, a good relationship with your customer. I don't know, but let me find out. You show that you were willing to find what you don't know, okay? And bring the answer to your customer. This is super, super um, good. So as I mentioned, customer experience is a cycle. Okay, um, and what a, what a cycle, what, a, what about it? Let's explore more about this concept. So 
So for the part one of this session, we're gonna cover what is customer service, right? So customer service is all about creating a relation of trust and loyalty with your customer. It's all the support given to them. And remember, we are talking about internal and or external customers, okay? So it's about exceeding their expectations. It's a complete journey. Um, it's, it's interesting because customer service, uh, we could describe as like a single or a simple transaction, while customer experience is the whole journey. Okay, um, and I like this phrase very much. I don't know, but let me find out. I think it's very honest and customers like honesty. You know, they do like it. And it's uh, it's very nice because you, you're gonna find out. So we're gonna bring an answer. So that's what your customer need. Um, so it's all about it. Customer experience, it's a cycle, is a cycle. Okay, and we're gonna explore more um, uh, of it on the next slide. So let's check this out. So here we have an example of the customer service cycle. So it, it's uh, basically um, the, the three stages, attracting, engaging, and delighting your customer. So this first stage, attract, it's the first contact you have with your customer is what we call the moment of the truth. Um, so it's the moment you have to give the first good impression, right? So in this stage, in this moment, that's the right time to um, ask the right questions. You know, active list and your customer, listen to all the information they're giving to you. Pay attention to that. Um, so in this stage, many, many companies um, have a standard, a standard time to respond to an email, for example. Um, so you have, let's say, three hours to acknowledge the, and this is a standard, okay? So all the employees must follow this standard. So you have three hours to acknowledge the customer you receive the email. And then you only, and also you only do that if you don't have time to respond to it right away. So after that, you have 24 hours to send a full proposal or a quote, um, for example. And why they have that? Why, why they do that? Because they don't want to leave the customer without a response. They don't want to leave their customer um, waiting, right? So the competitor might contact them first, and you don't want that, okay? Um, and another thing, very important, is do not promise what you cannot deliver, okay? So using the example, the example of responding, send, uh, like sending a proposal, um, if you won't be able to send a proposal within 24 hours, do not promise it, okay? So if you tell your customer, oh, um, your proposal will, uh, will be sent um, by the end of the day, do it. And if you can't do it, um, Call them, let them know that for any reason you won't be able to send it, but, but um, on the, the next day, on the following day, in the morning, the proposal will be there and do it, okay? This is super, super important. That's the, the, the moment you have to build trust with this uh, prospect, okay? The next stage, um, it's engaging. So now that you have their attention, you send a proposal, you send this quote, you must follow up, okay? This is extremely important and people tend to not give attention, yet, you know, give attention to this topic. Um, have an agenda for follow-up. Do not delay it, okay? Uh, in this um, stage, in this phase, you might start negotiate, you, you might start negotiating. So what can I do for you, UK, okay? okay. So this is very, very important. So if you send a proposal, if you send a code uh, on the next day, call your customer, you know, hey, have you received your proposal? It's everything okay, what can I do for you? You were engaged, okay? The next stage is the lighting. So it's going beyond. Now you, your customer confirmed, um, he's an actual customer, he's doing business with you. So go beyond, personalize, whatever you can you know like 
uh, provide an experience, go beyond. You have this whole process to collect information from your customer. And what can it do? You what can you do in like something special to this customer? You know, and this is a never-ending cycle. Okay, even when you are dealing with um, um, when it's not a prospect, it's a like the same customer you have been dealing before. Um, this, this cycle is a never ending. Okay. You're going to keep attracting your customer, even in, even if he's already your customer. Okay. You have done business with them before. It doesn't matter. This is a never ending cycle. Okay. And on the next slide, I'll give you an example, um, like the step-by-step, -step, what should we do? Okay. Okay, so here I'm going to bring a personal example um, so we can identify all the stages of the service. So when I moved to Canada, I was living here for, I think, a month, not even a month. Um, so I went to the mall to get um, to find and choose a cell phone provider. OK, so I went to this first store, let's call it Store A. <laughs> um, and that was the first company I went. So I had a really bad experience. It was like a nightmare, nightmare. So we moved to the Store B, let's call it A and B. <laughs> um, so we went to the Store B where we met Michael. Um, and I remember his name and it was back in 2017, OK? Um, Michael went through the whole and perfect customer cycle with us. Let's see how. So after having like the, the, when we, after meeting him, um, that was the moment of the truth, right? That was the first impression we had about Michael. So he started by like asking questions, like analyzing our customer needs, our needs. Okay, so he asked questions, smart questions. How many lines we need? Um, ask where we're from. How, how, is, how is Brazil? How is the weather? Um, he asked how much we're willing to pay. And also he asked um, if we were students, maybe he could get a, a special discount. Okay, so after that, he analyzed our needs and he promised by the end of the day, you should receive your code with okay um, with uh, the best price I can I can get you. Um, so after I think it was like two hours, um, I got an email with the with the quote with a good student discount that I wasn't expecting because he he didn't mention the student discount. Okay, he only asked if you were a student. Um, so he sent me this deal with the good, the good discount, but I, I wasn't able to respond right away. So on the next day, he follow up. So he, he called me back. Okay. And he was like, did you receive it? How, how was it? How, how, how about price? Um, let, let me know when we can do something better. Anyways. Um, so on the next day, um, I signed a contract, okay? I signed a contract, I got a new phone, full internet. A month later, he called me back to check how was the service so far and asked to answer a survey. And I, I was like, why not? I happily did, okay? And I um, included his name, happily did that because Michael did an exceptional service, but customer service, exceptional. He was great. The conclusion. So my, Michael, Mike, <laughs> went through all the steps. He went through the whole cycle with us. And the conclusion is, I have signed two more contracts with Michael. We are, we are in 2021 and I signed my first contract in 2017. Okay, so why? Because of Michael. I could have, I, I could have uh, find, found another, um, maybe another cell phone provider with like a better price, but no, because I had such a good experience with Michael that I want, I want to stay. 
okay? And also, that's a good thing. I have sent him a lot of friends because of this, uh, because of his uh, excellent customer service. So that's the whole, that's a good example of a perfect cycle going through um, this, this perfect cycle, okay? Okay, so let's move to the second um, part. So the part two of the session is the importance of customer service. So it's understanding why is that so important. Um, so according to this article from SuperOffice, customers no longer base their loyalty on price or product. So instead, they stay loyal with companies due to the experience, right? So the customer experience they receive. So if you cannot keep up with their increasing demands, your customer will leave you, and that's a fact. And the numbers show that. So 86% of buyers are willing to pay more for a great ex uh, customer experience. And 46% um, have made impulsive purchase after receiving a more personalized experience. Um, I am in, so <laughs> I am part of this percentage for sure. Um, and also I brought um, more numbers and reasons. So it reduces, it reduces the employee turnover. So employ, employees want to work for business that appreciate worker contributions and encourage new ideas and treat them as what? Internal customers. So according to Forbes, about 96% of American business um, close their doors with 10 years. And one of the problem, guess what? Poor customer service. Also uh, retaining customers. So Keeping loyal customers is less expensive than getting new ones. It's like Michael. So I am a customer that is not expensive to Michael, right? He doesn't have to um, struggle to keep me there. It's just the basic, right? When, when um, he's dealing with a new customer, he has to fight for it. So it's less expensive to keep it, okay? Um, so, uh, research shows that it costs about five times more to attract new customers than to retain ex existing business, okay? And I have also more numbers. So, 59% of people will try a new company to receive better customer service, okay? Uh, and 25% of satisfied customers will return to a business two or more years after a good service experience. Okay, it's like this hotel you've been five years ago and you cannot forget about it because the experience was great. So um, you want to go there. You know, you went to this hotel in Mexico 10 years ago. You had this, ex this extremely awesome experience. When you go to Mexico, you just you can only think about the same hotel. And why is that? Because of the service, the experience you had. Okay, and the chart, the, the blue chart shows exactly, exactly like the, the top priority for, for business now, um, it's customer experience. You know, people want to have nice experience. They don't want, they don't, they don't, don't give much attention to the product or to the price as long as they have a good experience. And the companies are, understanding that and giving the uh, the a reasonable attention to to it you know investing on like trainings investing on um having um good staff good employees able to um deliver a great service on the same page train this is very very important okay So the part two of this um, session today is the importance of customer service. Um, so now, so now we know about it, <clears throat> about the cycle. But now we need to understand why is that so important. Okay. So according to this article from SuperOffice, uh, customers no longer base their loyalty on like price or product. Instead, they stay loyal with the companies, like the, the experience they receive. Okay, so if you cannot keep up with their like increasing demands, your customer will leave you. And that's a fact. And the numbers show that. So 86% of buyers are willing to pay more for a great customer experience. And 46 have made impulsive purchase after receiving a more personalized experience. 
I'm one of them. <laughs> um, it also reduces the employee turnover, like the rate. Um, employees want to work for a business that appreciate worker um, contributions and that encourage new ideas and that, guess what? Treat them as internal customers. That's why this concept is so, so important. According to Forbes, about 96% of American businesses um, close their doors with 10 years. And one of the problems, guess what? Poor customer service. Um, also, it also retains customers. So keeping loyal customers is less expensive than getting new ones. Okay, it's like my relation with Michael, it's way easier for him to manage than with a new customer. The new customer, he has to fight for it. While with me, he, he, he just, um, ha he has to maintain a good relation and I'm with him, I'm loyal to him. Okay, uh, so research shows that it costs about five times more to attract new customers than to retain existing business. And I also have more numbers, very interesting numbers. So 59% of people would try a new company to receive better customer service. Why not? And 25% of satisfied customers will return to a business uh, two or more years after a good service experience. So it's like this hotel. Um, you've been five years ago in Mexico. And you cannot forget it. You cannot forget about it because the experience was amazing. Um, so when you think about going back to Mexico, you can just think about this hotel staying there because you want to have the same experience or even better. Okay. And this blue chart uh, shows that, show this number. That's why companies' business are uh, putting customer experience as one of the top priority um, in the next five years in the case of this chart. So you can see that customer experience comes first with 45.9%. And the next one is product with 33.6%. And the last is pricing with 20.5%. So here you can see, and it shows exactly how the, the market works. So they don't, people like the customers, they don't give as much as the attention to the product and to the pricing as long as you have a good experience. Okay, that's why it's super important to have and to man, like maintain, guarantee, give training to your employees um, and also yourself, like keep yourself on track keep yourself um, like having like trainings um, to so you know all the all the organization is in the same page to deliver an exceptional customer service. Okay, so now that we know more about customer um, experience in general, um, we want to know how to measure it, right? So measuring customer satisfaction, how we do that. I mean, I know what I am. I know I'm delivering a great service in my team um, as well. But how do I know my customer is happy? So how can I manage that? And it's extremely important to understand and track how you, your company, and or uh, your team are handling customer service. And with the data you're going to collect, uh, you can analyze what you should keep doing and what you must improve. Uh, and or change to get a better score. So there are many um, ways to um, understand and track your customer satisfaction, but I brought three today. So the first one is the CSAT, uh, which is the customer satisfaction score metric um, that targets customer with basic questions. Um, so it's like, how would you rate your experience working with ABC company? And typically the answer is, um, range from like very unsatisfied, satisfied, not, and so on. Um, we also have the Net Promoter Score, also known as NPS. Um, it's a metric used in like customer experience programs and it measures the loyalty of customers to a company. Um, and it's typically measured with a single question survey and reported with a number from minus 10, minus 100 to minus 100. And of course, a higher score is desirable. Like the higher, the better. 
Um, so they are usually they are usually uh, sent as a survey after the service or the pro the product. Um, so you can have like a form and you can uh, collect all the data from the survey uh, to understand how is the service going in your company? How is it like uh, being delivered? Okay, uh, this is very, very common. Um, however, people tend to not, not to respond to this uh, surveys anymore because depending on how the, 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 like, how long is it? People do not answer. It. Um, so you have to use and ask smart questions that will be useful um, to your um, your um, your the data you were collecting. Okay. The second one is the direct feedback. So after delivering your product and service, why not call your customer? So we understand that by now we already have a good relation with this customer. Okay, so why not call call um, your customer and ask for honest feedback? So how was your experience with us? How was it? Um, would you buy with us again? Um, you know, and get information, as much information as you can from it. Take notes, um, you know, store this data. Um, use it for the next purchase. Use the, use the information in your favor, like, Use it as um, as a good tool, uh, so you can use for like sales, for improving customer service. So this is very very important. Okay, some companies um, they um, you know they will call the customer and uh, invite them for a coffee after the like the service was delivered. Um, um, how about a coffee so we can chat and then um, you can ask for an honest, honest feedback, okay? Some people invite some uh, companies, right? Invite um, them for lunch. Um, so there are many, many ways you can collect um, direct feedback as long as you have a good relation with your customer. This is key, okay? The third one is analytics. So this is very, very popular nowadays with the social media. Um, because you can um, use it uh, or your website to track traffic and content. Um, it's like all the, the reviews on Amazon, right? You buy something, you leave a comment, you, you can even add a, a picture of it. So with all, this, the, with all this information, you can collect data, okay? Like when you see a, a product on Amazon, you can see the star, the rating, right? The customer is, is like a real feedback and it works very much because um, this is like real uh, customers leaving their comments. So watch the comments, okay? If you have a, so, a social media channel, if you have an Instagram page, a Facebook page, watch the comments, okay? Do not leave it behind. Do not, you know, um, this is very, very valuable source. Internet is, pow is a powerful tool to measure customer satisfaction, okay? Use it as much as you can. Um, and again, um, e either if it's like the CSAT or the NPS, or you are having um, um, a, like a conversation with your customer asking for feedback, ask, ask, honest questions, sorry, smart questions, you know, uh, take as much information as you, as you can. Okay, this is very, very important. So now that we covered pretty much the whole concept of customer service, I want to share the last tips and recommendations to deliver an unforgettable customer service and experience. So the first thing is uh, personalize, personalize and personalize. Get as much information from your customer to do that and do it whenever you can. And don't, and don't forget um, the numbers I just presented a few slides back, okay? Um, flexibility is also key. So be flexible, avoid saying no to your customers. So check all the possibility, um, check all the products and service you have and you can offer instead the one uh, you don't have, okay? So avoid, avoid saying no. Uh, so when you were talking to your customer and keep eye contact, body language counts a lot. Active listening your customer is key as well. 
your attention must be 100% to them when they are talking to you. From a very informal talk, you can get valuable information. Um, and respond as quick as you can. Uh, be the first contact gets there before your competitor. You know, you don't want to be the second one getting there. You, you don't want to uh, be the second code or the second proposal. So do your best to be the first. Um, uh, also maintain a positive attitude. So I have a mantra, like a personal mantra. I always, uh, <clears throat> um, I always use. So sometimes a customer says, um, hey, Carol, um, you know, I have a problem. And I always say, like, wait, 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 no, no. We have here a situation uh, and we are working together to solve it before it becomes a problem. So uh, do not treat situations um, as a problem. It's how you say things, okay? Um, so for me personally, this is very, very important. Uh, <clears throat> also smile, you know, um, do not forget it. This is basic, but it's important to remember. Um, a smile, a, a nice smile is always very welcome. Um, and last but not least is keep in touch. So add your customer on LinkedIn, send emails often, um, work on maintaining the relation, even when you're not doing business at that moment. You know, um, this is important to um, maintaining your, your um, the health of your relationship with your customer. Um, and don't forget the customer experience is the complete journey. Do not forget, do not skip any of the steps of the process. Make it special, okay, for your internal and for your external um, customers. Um, so that's it for the session. Thank you very much for watching it. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, comments, suggestions. Um, I would appreciate it very much. Um, th this is my email and my LinkedIn account. I'll be happy to have you as uh, a connection there. Um, and thank you very much for your time.